little experiment that will work on the vast majority of you. Think of two simple geometric shapes. That's simple like a square, but think of your own ones. Put one inside the other, and then give them both a colour. You got that? Okay, I was thinking of a circle and a triangle, and the colours were red and green. Did you think of the same as me? If you did, do you know why you thought of the same as me? Enjoy the show. I get asked if my abilities can be scientifically tested. The answer is no, because what I'm doing is not psychic, it's soft science, psychological trickery. I control the conditions, so my testers become my testees. A few years ago in the United States, a girl of nine brought embarrassment to the psychic healing industry with a very simple test to see if psychics really can, as they claim, feel energy from a person. Now the test was very straightforward. A screen was set up like this with two holes in it. And uh, we've got Richard Robson here, who's a researcher from St. Bartholomew's and London Research Institute. And you've had a look at this and inspected and made sure that I can see neither through the screen nor over the top nor around it. That's right. Great, fantastic. On one side of the screen sat the healer, that's going to be me. On the other side sat the young girl. The healer would place his hands through the holes and the girl would place her hand above one of the healer's hands. And all the healer had to do was say whether he thought the girl's hand was above his left hand or his right hand. The results when the psychics did this was 44% accurate, which is slightly worse than you'd get from guessing. So bravo to the psychic healing community. Um, I'm not psychic, but I will do my best to get better than 44%. Okay. So now I'm sitting down. If you jumble yourselves up, so you're in a different order. And when you're in position, the first person, please, put your hand above one of mine and say ready when you're done. Ready. Okay. Now I wiggled my right hand on purpose. That should have put you off going there and made you go over to the left hand side. So I would say left for the first one. Correct? Correct. Next, please. Ready. Now you've just seen the left, so I would say you would go for right, correct? Correct. correct. Next, please. Ready. Okay, you now want to break the alternating pattern that I just mentioned, so you would go for right again, correct? Yes. Next, please. So this is number, how many of you are there left? Six? Okay, next, please. Ready. Great, now you just heard me say left, so you wouldn't do that, you'd go for right, correct? Correct. Next, please. Ready. Left. Next. Correct. Ready. Left again, next. No. Ah! Okay, I'm all right. Okay, I'll get you back later. All right, next. Ready. That's left. Yeah. Correct. Thank you. Next. Ready. Oh, left again. Correct. Next. Ready. Left. Correct. Is this is the last one, I believe. Above one of mine. Ready. You're going to do it left again. Yep. Correct. Yes, fantastic. <laughs> Is that 9 out of 10? Yes. Can I get that one person back that I messed up with? The one person back. Let me try this again with you. Ready. Okay. Place your hands a little closer to mine, please. Closer. Don't move. That one. That's right. Ah. Strong hands, you've been used to fighting a corner, you've got older brothers and sisters, yeah? And, and you're sporty. Um, I was going to say football, I, I, think you, I think you'd be a football fan, but it's, I know, it's, it's golf. Yeah, it's golf, and uh, you work with computers. That's right. And that's something else that's, uh, is, that, is that vinyl, something, records, vinyl, you work in a record shop or something? And there's something else. It's dogs. You've got dogs. Terriers. Three. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. We got it right that um, football supporter, golf, played golf, um, had three terriers uh, with her parents, uh, used to DJ uh, years ago. Um, <laughs> don't know how he did it. Amazing. I don't think it's science, I think it's an art. Or it's something that science hasn't yet been able to understand. Must be mind control. <laughs> 
A good communicator affects our physiology. The power of voice can entrance us, even induce or remove pain. I came to the old operating theatre at London Bridge. You're all medical students? Yeah. yeah. Have you been here before? Yeah. It is a remarkable place. This is where they used to perform amputation, amputation. Imagine yourself. Imagine delirious, yourself. Delirious. Delirious. With fear. With fear. There's no anaesthetic. Just hold you down. Hold you down. Hold you down. And hope that you'd just pass out before they'd finished. So I want to try something with all of you. And while it may be a bit disturbing, I can absolutely guarantee your safety. If you don't want to do this, that's absolutely fine. You can say so. But if you do, once you're in, you're in. And there's no going back. All right? Are you all happy to do this? Yeah. Yeah? yeah? yeah. You don't want to do it? No. Sure? Yeah. Absolutely fine. I'm going to make your way back out there. So let's begin. It's very easy to get an idea in somebody's head. Do you study dentistry as part of the course? No. No? The whole area of toothache is an interesting one. But often what happens is the nerves at the actual base of the tooth, like right, you know, right in there, right where the base of the tooth would be, go bad, right in there. You must have had really bad toothache. The first sort of tingling feeling that you get, I mean, what's it like? How would you describe this sort of a toothache pain? Constant pain. Yeah? yeah. You're feeling that now, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. What's that like? Sharp down straight across. Mm -hmm. You're genuinely feeling that now? I'm genuinely feeling that. Mm -hmm. Straight down. Sometimes it's the sort of thing that can spread. You're getting it in your gums or is it in the teeth yeah, itself? It's also everywhere. Yeah. Down your jaw. Right down your jaw. And when it gets worse, and it gets worse. And suddenly it's gone. And gone. And you don't feel anything at all. It's like it's anaesthetized. You feel nothing. Nothing at all. Like in the back of your hand there. It's like a blueness. It's like a blueness in the hand. But nothing. <laughs> Try pinching it. What's it like? Nothing clammy and not responsive at all. I imagine you can probably feel your wrist, can you? Or you can feel your arm. Yeah. And you really not feel that? Seriously. Would you be happy to, you know, bash that or twist it really hard or stick something through it? Yeah. Would you be happy to stick a needle through it? Yeah. Would you be happy to do that now? If I gave you a needle? Yeah. Just to show us that really is dead. You'd be happy? Yeah. <laughs> These are sterilised hypodermic needles. You want to hold that in that hand. You really can't feel that, can you? Seriously. Absolutely dead. It's just like a piece of dead meat on the table. It's like sticking a needle through a piece of dead meat. Go and just push it through. You should right through and out the other side. Right through. Oh my. Uh, you can't feel a thing, can you? No. How does it make you feel? Weird. That is... Weird. It's just a dead hand. Have you ever seen anything like that before? No. And you're not bleeding? You're completely happy with that? Completely happy with that. Pull it back out, gently. No blood. No bleeding. Now the feeling's gonna come back in your hand now. There'll be no pain. You find you can start moving your fingers now and moving your hand. saw the needle there and then it just came back out the other side and thinking now this really should be hurting but just nothing at all. When you took the needle out you just couldn't see anywhere that the needle had been. I was really surprised. I thought you know, there'd be some blood at least. It was an amazing experience. Impressed. Very, very impressed. <laughs> 
The easiest way to let a scientist assess what I try and do is to let him experience it firsthand, which of course robs him of his objectivity. Here at the Tate Modern, where art meets science, we have Richard Robson from the Bartholomew's in London Research Institute. Thank you so much for joining us. And a group of hard-nosed, tough and cynical students who have given us some of their time. Thank you so much indeed. Um, now, Richard, come and sit with me. Let me uh, check a few things with you. You have brought with you some objects from home. I asked you to bring some objects, to put them in your briefcase, to not let anybody see them when you got here, not to tell anybody what they were, to keep them absolutely 100% secret and private. Have you done that? Yes. And you've got them here with you? Right. That's right. Superb. I'm going to look the other way while you take one of those out. Change your mind as many times as you like until you can get one. Hold it in your hands. Close the briefcase. Put it back down again. And then I'll turn around. All okay. right? Right. So I won't look at you. Pat. I will look over here. You done that? Yes. Are you holding it in your hand like this? Is yes. it safe for me to turn around? Yes. Okay, let me explain exactly what I want you to do. Um, rest your hands just there on my hand. All right. This sounds very strange. What I want you to do is to look down at your hands. Imagine they're made of glass. And you're nervous. I can feel that. Don't worry. Just relax. Imagine your hands are glass. You can look through and you can see the object. Good. Now look at me. This could be something that you've just picked up on the way out. It could be something that you've, you, you know, that really has some kind of uh, sentimental value to you. I don't know. I mean, how long have you had it for, roughly? Three years. About three years or so. Okay. I mean, I'm just getting the impression as you're sat there and talking, it's something you feel a little sentimental about, just from the way that you're guarding it a little bit. Is that right? I'm wondering if it's something you were given or something that you picked up yourself. And the slight relaxation in your shoulders told me it's something you picked up yourself. So it's not a gift. So if it's, it's not a sentimental thing in the sense that it's attached to a person you love. It's something, some silly thing that's for yourself that maybe you find lucky or that has some, and you <laughs> careful not to give too much away, but you are grinning there. So it's something lucky. All right. Just look at me and just think about what it is. Just see it in your mind. See it in your mind. What is it? It's something that you've got from holiday somewhere, that you've been traveling, and it's from somewhere in Europe. You wanted to say something beginning with a B, I think. And it's like a coin or some small little memento that to you is a, has become like a lucky talisman. I want to see what it is. What is it? It's a one guilder from the Netherlands. From the Netherlands, all right. It was the B I was getting, but I don't know what that was. Excellent. But I want to try something else with you. This time I want you just to think of something from home. Okay. Something you haven't brought with you. So it can be any size you like, anything you like. And I'm not going to tell you what it is. One of our students are. So have a look up and down them and choose one. Um, maybe the girl with the white t-shirt. Come and join us. What's your name? Kerry. Kerry, thank you so much. for Come and have a seat. Thanks. All right. Whatever this thing is you're thinking of now, stick with it. Don't change your mind. Kerry, you are going to look at Richard and you are going to tell him what he's thinking of. Sounds impossible, and you won't know how you're going to do it, but you just are. And this is also something that you can do over and over again and freak people out with. But for the 28 million people watching this, whom I don't want going out and doing this tomorrow, we're going to turn the sound down while I give you a few simple instructions on how to do it. Okay? So here's what you do. Actually, could you stick your fingers in your wrist? take that for me. You're going to look him right in the eye and you just talk when I tell you to start and you just whatever comes out you start to get ideas and you just let them slowly form and don't worry if you get it wrong. Do nothing to give nothing away. Okay? Okay. Relax a bit. Excellent. Start now. I see um, I think colours. Say whatever comes to mind. Something of his is something that he would he would use. I'm looking at his tie, and okay. it's making me think of that colour. I don't know if that's colour of the object. I'm just looking at the okay, tie, no, no. but I, I see just I see that colour. What color. comes to mind? Keep talking. Something round. Um, something something he'd play. How big? It's not big, but not not tiny. How might he use it? He he'd either play with the object or wear it. Just to, 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 to do with playing something, okay. some sport, but 
Okay, just write it down, whatever you think it is. You seem to be getting some specific ideas. I just write it down. Don't let him see. Can you see this thing clearly in your mind? Yes. Yeah? Don't say anything, let's not hear anything yet. You got something close to it? Yeah, I think yeah? so. Okay, don't show him yet. All right, Richard. Just be absolutely honest, please. It doesn't matter if all this is wrong, it doesn't matter. Just tell me, what were you thinking of? What were you imagining from home? My black baseball cap. Okay. <laughs> I, got, I got baseball cap. <laughs> I, I saw blue, though. I did see blue. I don't, I don't know why. I just had... had... <laughs> <But> <laughs> Dark blue? I, <laughs> I've never done anything like that before. So it must be... Darren, but I, d I just don't know how he got me to, to, to do that. Hit the nail on the head in black and white, just saw exactly what I was thinking. It's very surreal. I invited two members of MBA, an advertising agency, to a secret location to propose an unusual task. Those who work in advertising are masters of persuasion. They subtly weave their images and slogans into our daily lives, knowing that we will register so much unconsciously. And then we walk into a supermarket and feel a sense of familiarity with a product we think we've never heard of. Millions of pounds a year are spent on it. It's brilliantly calculated and we all fall for it. So I thought I'd turn the tables on the advertising experts. Thank you for joining us, gentlemen. Tony, yes? Yes, that's fine. And Martin? Yeah. Hi, I'm Darren. Let me get down to explaining exactly what I want you to do. Imagine that I'm opening a chain of stores, selling a product, something I have a particular interest in. Your task is to come up with a poster advertising that store. And that poster must include the company name, whatever you decide that may be. It must include a strap line, some sort of slogan, and some kind of logo as well, some kind of visual image. Now the idea is you've only got half an hour to do this, so you've got to really work with your first instinct. So at the moment, you've got no idea what you're going to do, correct? No. Excellent. That's I'm also good. going to give you this. I've had a few design ideas of my own. Okay. I want to leave this untouched. We'll come back to that later. All right? Are there any questions? What's the product? What's the product? Very good question. A mm. uh, passion of mine since I was a toddler. It's a chain of taxidermy stores. Mm. Let me uh, pop the pussycat on the envelope so it remains untouched. You have half an hour, gentlemen. Okay. Good luck. Great, thanks. thanks. Right, let's go for it. To get stuffed is a start. Right. Animal hospital. Yeah, the yeah. ones who didn't make it. No, that's probably just stupid. To do with wings? Well, creatures great and small. Quality that says, like, nice, positive type dead yeah. animals. Animal heaven. Where animals go. Animal where heaven, that's good. Graveyard. Animal yeah. heaven's good. Animal heaven. Where the best animals go to. Loads of clouds with animals on them. Yeah, gates, harps, pearly gates, gates, bear playing a harp. Yeah. Only the best Zoo. get in. Only the best get into air. Yeah, yeah. Where dead animals go oh. to live. Yeah. Where the best. best it's the best place for dead animals. <laughs> <laughs> it's simple. Time up, gentlemen. Okay. I can't wait to see what you've done. Uh, come and show me. Okay. And Tony, before yeah. we do this, can you take the uh, envelope I gave you earlier? Okay. And can you please. Vouch for us here that no one's been anywhere near it. He's been under a dead cat. No one's touched it. That's, That's right. The truth. That's, That's the truth. That's the truth. Keep all of it. Come around here. Now, before we have a look <clears> at it, just tell me what was it like. We started off thinking about the name. I thought that was the, we thought that was probably yeah, the best thing to the do. Starting point. Sure. And then take it from there. Really, we banged out a lot of ones that were probably completely stupid, and then got down to the ones that were slightly stupid, mm -hmm. and then we kind of that went back yeah. and forth for a bit, and then kind of got something we liked and developed yeah. it. You can I have a look? Sure. Sure. Is this it? Yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a bear with a liar. So it's animal heaven, the best place for dead animals. And it's obviously, you, you'd see that it was stuffed. How did you come up with the name animal heaven? We had the idea of the pearly gates of heaven being a zoo gate. Zoo gates? As the gates of heaven, that's yeah, interesting. I.e. Yeah. sort of all the animals that are dead are in the dead zoo, if you like, in heaven. And then we just kind of thought, well, it's kind of nice, but it's a bit twee. And we wanted to make it a bit funkier. And then we mm. thought a hard playing bear just answered the, <laughs> answered the brief. That's fantastic. I do want to show you my own ideas from beforehand. OK. Um, I don't want to touch. Would you open them for me? Sure. 
Yeah. Anyone to raise? I think you'll find this interesting. Okay. Go to the envelope. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. All right. Not a million miles away. Let me put this up there. Hang on to that. It's yeah. It's a heart playing bear. Yeah. God. You've gone for these angel wings here. Were you thinking of angel wings or bird wings? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, they were kind of a combination. You do them a lot better than me. This uh, this was the same thing. I was thinking angel wings there. You've got animal heaven. I got creature heaven. Yeah. So you're, Where the best you're a bit off there then. A bit off there. <laughs> yeah. Where the best dead animals go. Did you put blessed place with dead animals? Wow. Very similar. I had the idea of a zoo gate on there. It was hard to we leave out. We didn't want to overload it. Was, it. it was hard to leave out, but sure. it just wasn't. It was just a bit too much. Can I see your other, um, the other one you were talking yeah, about? Yeah, put it, it down. Yeah, it's just before there. Is yeah. it very different? Well, well, it's just just the gates. Yeah. Oh, gentlemen, please. We're drawn quite similar. <laughs> Look at that. This, this was the image I was thinking. I've done it there in the background because this to me was the more striking image. And interestingly, you abandoned this for this one. This was yeah. obviously well, the first. In your mind. The first bear I drew looks exactly like that one, actually. It did, yeah. The oh, first bear you drew. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll show you on the, on the notes. Show me, like that, yeah. show me. What have you got? Well, that, this is scary, really. But, um. Oh, look at that! Yeah. Look at that! You've got the cloud. You got the blue. If you knew the amount of effort we've gone into making this work, you'd be mm. absolutely flabbergasted. But for now, it's comforting to know that you're just as susceptible to subliminal persuasion as the rest of us. Thank you very much for <laughs> helping you. us out, Tony. Thank you. Martin. Pleasure. Take care. Thank you Thanks. very much indeed. Bye -bye. I think I'm quite cynical. When I saw the bear and I saw a cloud, first of all, from, you know, behind the paper, I thought, hang on, he's close here. And then when, when we saw the rest of it, I you know, couldn't believe it. I uh, immediately thought, oh, I'm gutted. I, <laughs> I could see that it was folded, and I just saw the bear's foot hanging over the cloud with the harp. Yeah. And I just thought, oh, I can't believe it. Yeah. You know, uh, it was and gutted. How embarrassing. But now, now I think, oh, fantastic, yeah. you know, I'm over the moon. I, I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously, we're pleased for him, you know. Yeah. You know. Yeah, he's... It's yeah, as long as, you know, if he comes out of this looking good, then that's, you know, <laughs> that's always the main thing. <laughs> to see how we did it, watch their taxi journey again. I put a spell on you. Cause you're mine. Do, 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 do. You better stop the things you do. An experiment that will work on most of you, I will try and transmit you the identity of this card. Don't try and guess what it is, just wait until you get it. Make the colour bright and vivid, see a screen in your mind, and on the screen the little number low down in the corner and up at the top, and the things down the middle, down the centre, the boom, 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 down the middle of the card. Picture it. Have you got it? Say out loud what you think it is. I had the three of diamonds. Did you get it? Enjoy the show. People waiting around in train stations tend to slip into a state of limbo, which makes them very suggestible. This is the only time you'll ever see actors in this show. Oh, piss off, your hat! Piss off! So staging a little incident allows me to impress a commuter with her own abilities. Excuse me, can I just ask you a few questions about what you just saw? We're filming a piece about short-term memory. Would you stand up for a second for me? Now, that whole argument that you just saw was actually staged for the purposes of this experiment. And the chap that had the argument with the woman, this is his wallet. Can you hold on to that for me? Both hands, nice and tightly. Can you tell me about what you remember? Tall man, baseball cap, yeah. dark jacket. I think dark hair, yeah. I'm not sure. Okay, remember any details about the guy apart from that? No. No, okay, no. all right. I want to show you how, in fact, you have all those memories, those details stored in your unconscious. I'll ask you some more questions. Don't try and answer accurately. Just answer with whatever comes to mind. All right? Don't even try and remember. Close your eyes for me. And I'm also going to place my hand over your eyes for a second, just there. Now, just relax and go with me. Don't even try and remember, but I want you to tell me a little bit more about the details. He's wearing a cap. Tell me about the cap. Dark blue. OK. Something on the front. Something on the front. All right. Tell me what you see on the front. Zoom in on it. See it clearly. What's on the front of the cap? NY, New York. Very good. What's the jacket made of? You said a dark jacket. Leather. I want you to zoom in a little bit on his top pocket. On his top pocket. What do you see? A ticket. A ticket. What else? A pen. Fantastic. What colour is the pen? Zoom right in on it. Silver and black. 
Fantastic. What's he wearing underneath the jacket? Sweatshirt. Sweatshirt. What color is the sweatshirt? Grey. Very good. Now, is there a detail on the sweatshirt that you can remember? Italian flag. Italia. Hold well on. Open your eyes. Look at me. Let me tell you, everything that you've said so far has been pretty much absolutely on the nose. I don't know how you're doing this, but it just has been. Now I'm going to ask you to do something which will seem impossible. I want you to tell me the man's name. Now don't try and guess it, you're just going to say what comes to mind. And we're going to start just with a letter, a letter for the Christian name. A letter will just explode into your mind. What letter comes to mind for the Christian name? What comes to mind now? P. P, very good. So what might it be, beginning with P? Peter. Peter. All right, so just a guess, but that's fine. Now the surname, we're going to get a letter for the surname. Imagine the surname written on a page in a book, all right? Just the surname and just the letter that begins the surname. What comes to mind now? Say it. Oh. Oh, very good. And is it a long name or a short name, do you think? Short name. Short name. One syllable, two syllables? One what is syllable. it? Say it, say Read. it now. Read. Read. That, well, where's that coming from? Just, I don't know. You're just making it up? It's... Read. Just read, but you're just making this up. You don't know why, you've no reason, right? Let me tell you. This is going to freak you out. You've got his wallet in your hand. Open it up. I don't want to touch it. It's his driving license. Do you want to just take that out? No! You're right, you're shaking. Have a look at it. What does it say? Piers Reed. Piers Reed. That was very, very close. I didn't you're see really him shaking. that I close. Feel... I'm sure I didn't see him that close. He asked me to shut my eyes and just go down. Man, it was strange. I could see things that I didn't know I'd seen. It was like I was seeing it for the first time. Like I'd honed in on it. I really don't know how I got that name. That's freaked me a little bit because how do I know his name? I've, I've, I don't know his name. I'm shaking. I can't believe that has happened. People are always saying, can you use your skills to get extraordinarily beautiful women into bed? Well, yes. Yes, I can. Michelle? Me. Alex. Alex, good to meet you. Philippa. Do you need any more? Philippa. Hello. Yeah, can, I, can I just say, because we've been, we've been looking at a lot of very beautiful women tonight with the models and everything, but can I just say, and I mean this, and if this sounds cheesy, I apologise, but I just think you three are are really lovely. You are so <laughs> cheesy. No, 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 this, isn't, no, this isn't cheesy. No, this isn't cheesy, this isn't cheesy, because okay. there's a lot of beautiful people out there, but you've just got like a glow or a presence or something about you. Okay, that is a really cheesy chat. Would, <laughs> would, that, would that work for you for even an instant? Not in that. No, no, not in that. All right, can I... Would it work for you? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I ask each one of you, right? And do this absolutely seriously for me. Can you think in your minds of a quality that, that you would want from a guy? All yes. right? Mm -hmm. Just focus on something. And Philippa, if you would in particular mm -hmm. think of... Um, a line, a, like a chat-up line, maybe one that's worked for you in the past, mm -hmm. or one that would might work for you, that if some, some guy came up and said this, you'd be like, yeah, okay, I'll let this guy buy me a drink, or yeah, you know, I'll crawl around at all falls and butt like a dog, if that's what you really <laughs> want. It doesn't take a lot. No. Okay. Will you, will you think of something for yes. me? Yes. So you've got a line. Mm -hmm. is, it, is this something that's worked for you in the past? Is it something that... It's something I was very impressed with. All right, okay, don't give me any more clues than that. And, um, and you two, uh, I'll come back to that. Michelle, isn't it? Yes. Look at me. Now this quality, just imagine I'm some guy, this is, this is how I do it in real life. Imagine I'm walking up to you in a party. Have me say in your mind, just hear me say the thing you'd want me to say or, or to pick up on the thing. It's, and if I get this right, this is like the most difficult thing that I do, so let me know that I'm right. This is astrology, isn't it, with you? Yes. Yeah, you're quite big on that. That's quite a big major part of what you do. Yes. And I think something that would really is that was that what you were thinking of? Yes. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and um, well, no, yeah. it, it would literally be that I'm the same star sign that would that would do it. Oh my. Is that is that what you had in mind? Yes. Be absolutely honest. That's what you had in mind. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yours, I think, is 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 not that because you'd have reacted if I was saying that. I think it's. Um, I think it's 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 an it's a nice it's a friendly thing, but it's it's like sense of sense of humour would be really important <laughs> to you. That's what you're thinking of. Yeah? Yeah. This is this is, um, this is this is this is great. Okay, now look at me, look at me. Now hear me. Oh my god, that's hear brilliant. me say hear me say the line. And also genuinely eyes are very important to you, aren't they? Because you're giving me a lot back now, yeah? Okay. Did you kind of have that in mind yeah, as yeah, well yeah, that you're yeah. thinking of eyes yeah, as well? Yeah. Alright, now hear me say the line. Hear me say the line. Um, let me say the line. 
Okay, this is something that a guy said to you quite a while back. It's not, it's not going to be It's not going to be about your appearance. It's not going to be anything like that because you're very cynical about that. It is. My friends say I'd be really good for you. Oh. Oh. Is that it? Is that it? Oh, yeah. Does that work? <laughs> So it didn't oh actually God. really work, but it kind of. Um, it didn't work at the time, but it but it melted really you. Good. It melted you for a minute. I thought I was yeah. impressed by it. So oh my <laughs> God! Thank okay, you. We'll have a drink later on. You're all the best, mate. Millwall Stadium, where the twin worlds of football and vomiting meet. I risked having beer poured over my head to play a game with the bustling connoisseurs of this fine sport. Excuse me, mate. What's your name? Tim. Tim. Are we going to play? You know the game Paper, Scissors, Stone? When you go yeah. one, two, three, and then you do something, all right? We'll play a few rounds of that. I'm very good at this. Okay. All right, we'll do three rounds and I'll win, and then you can decide whether I'm going to win or lose a draw. All right, ready? Okay, get ready, go. We'll do it, do it in your hand like this, one, two, three. One, two, three. So I win there my stone blunts for scissors, all right? We'll play again, we'll play again, ready? Ready? One, two, three. Yep, my paper wraps your stone. Back off, come me. I win again, third time. Third time, ready? One, two, three. And my scissors cut your paper. I win again. Then my, do you want me to win, lose, or draw? Win. You want me to win, okay, all right, ready? One, two, three. My stone. Oh, 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 right. no, 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 you want me to lose one? Yeah. All right, no problem. No problem at all. All right, go. One, two, three. Yep, your stone. Oh, well oh, done. Yeah. What were the uh, last three oh, match fun. results for uh, Mill? Uh, two nil, four nil, and one nil. The three wins. Yeah. All right, three wins. Okay. Go. I cut your paper again. I blunt your scissors. Last one. I wrap your stone. Right now, you might think that I'm, you know, that I'm, I'm uh, seeing what he's coming up with, and then coming in quarter of a second later. So I'll do it again, but I look the other way, so I won't be able to see what he's doing. All right, win, lose, or draw. Uh, win. You want me to win for the last one, but I'm going to look the other way. All right, ready? Yeah. One, two, three. No. <laughs> well done, mate. Cool. 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 <laughs> what do you think of that, Gov? Sorry. What do you think of that? Amazing. He's brilliant. If he's got power to do that, I suppose it's a bit freaky, isn't it? Win, lose, or draw? Draw. draw. Me to draw. Okay, here we go, watch. I can't see him. One, two, three. <laughs> Fantastic. Well done. It's all still in the mind, isn't it? It's quite amazing. It's amazing. Pickpockets are masters of psychological manipulation and control, though they're gone in an instant. I employed some more sustained techniques to see how boldly I could fleece someone whilst being as charming as possible. Can I borrow you for two seconds? We're just doing some filming oh, yeah, sure. about yes, train stations. Is that all right? Yes, sure. What's your name? Uh, Anthony. Anthony, I'm Darren. Come over here. Come meet the crew. Um, sorry, did you say Anthony? Yeah. All right. all right, I'm Darren. Good to meet you. Let me just show you exactly what we're doing. It's a list of various things that people normally do when they're... I keep him slightly bewildered with a series of instructions and questions which renders him very suggestible. I use a kind of tactile misdirection. I attract his attention to one wrist by holding in there quite firmly while I remove his watch from the other. Would you bring your own book or would that be... I might get the metro, yeah, bring my own book sometimes. Now, are you actually catching a train today or are you just meeting somebody? I'm actually meeting someone. I just can't. You meeting someone? All right, but you, so you just come off the train. That's yeah. great. Okay. Well, I'll ask you about this later. We may also just need to get you a um, a microphone somehow. Thank you. Maybe a lapel mic. Sorry. Um, is there a lapel mic we can get for this chair? Opening his jacket to suggest a lapel mic hides his view as I quickly check his trouser pockets, and my right arm then hides his view as my left hand enters his inside pocket. I do give this all back. So I'm going to go over there and ask you a few questions. Just relax and enjoy yourself. Okay. All right, I'll just be straight over there, okay? All right, relax and enjoy yourself. I'll ask you a few questions. Thank you. So you just want me to wait here for a minute? So actually the piece is about pickpocketing. Let me just give you a few things back here. I think you had a phone in your top pocket. That, yeah. was, uh, that, was, that was me there. Your tie. <laughs> I'm going to stick that back on. Thanks, I'll put that back on for me. That's great. Um, this was yours, which is oh, very nice. 
Better to keep it absolutely safe down in there. Did you have something, did you have something in, in your trouser pocket as well? We put that back to you. Anything else was there? Um, I had, I had a pen. You had a pen? Yeah. Oh, your watch as well. I think you were wearing it. Do you want to put that back watch. on for me? That would be... Oh, no, that's, 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 that's someone else's. That's not mine. I don't know who that is. Uh, that's yours, though. That's your visor. Yeah. Um, are you wearing a watch? Um, I was. No, I think it's that one there. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, hang on to that. Um, mobile phone as well, which I think is uh, that's still yours. Yeah. I think that's everything. Have you got everything? Um, I think so, yeah. You've got the pen. You've got the pen. You've got that. Uh, inside pocket, you've got that. Yeah. Uh, that is everything, isn't it? Yeah, I yeah think thank so. you so much. Okay. Excellent. Well, enjoy that with yours. Enjoy your um, rest of your day. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Thanks Thanks very much. I don't really know what's going on. It's so quick that you don't notice it going at all. It's just instantaneous. I don't know what he's got now, but I hope I've got everything. For me, the most enjoyable aspect of going out and performing is that I never know how susceptible people will be to my methods. Tonight I've been hired to entertain Lord Davenport and his dinner guests, a group of young barons, counts and countesses. Alex, if I said that I could just look you in the eye and genuinely tell you what your PIN number is, how would you react? I'd be amazed. <laughs> do you want to do this? Yeah. Okay. Imagine, for me, you're going to the cash machine. You take your card and you put it in the machine. Yeah. Put your hand flat on the table for me so I can That's see one. it. Just there. Excellent. The card goes in the machine and it says, please tap in your four digit number. In your mind, just do that. In your mind, just press the buttons. You okay. type in the first one. Try and keep your hand absolutely okay. still, please, all right? You don't need to move it. And the second. <laughs> the third. And the last digit. Okay. Alex. Hmm. How would you feel if this was your pin number right here? <laughs> I wouldn't believe it. <laughs> you may wish to uh, change this tonight after the party. <laughs> what? Is it right? It's right. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, wow. How'd you do that? <laughs> that's, that's, that's freaky, man. That is... Up there, just so the camera can see it. Yeah, that's fine. Up a little bit like that. There are a few things more enjoyable than being utterly charming towards someone whilst fleecing them. This time, I'm using a leaflet about travel cards to keep him occupied while he tries to be as helpful as possible. Hang on to that for a second. I'm going to move you back just a little bit. We might need to get you some. I might need to get you a, a lapel mic for. Uh, can we get a lapel mic? What's your name? Sorry, I didn't even ask. Chris, yeah. excellent. Let's get you a lapel mic so we can hear what you're saying. If not, sorry, hang on to that for a minute. Might you just change the background? You see the um, see where that sort of uh, lamppost is just there? Stealing a tie from someone's just neck is a useful skill when meeting a rival candidate like just before a job interview. That's fine. I'm going to go stand over there and ask you some questions. I need you to fill that out if that's all right. You've all played the game of word association. Yeah? Someone says a word and you say a word which you would instinctively connect with it. So if I said apples, you would say? Pears. Pears. We'll go all the way around the room, finishing with you, Jana, the last word. Would you, for me, just pluck a word out of the air and think of it, that will be your first word. Just say the word in your mind, over and, yeah, okay, thank you. I'm gonna write something down for a little later. <laughs> no peeking. Can I have that bottle, please? We'll play one round of this game. <coughs> Beginning with you. Alex, what was your word? Banana. Banana. Apple. Gold. Star. Bright. Black. Again? Black. Black. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Uh, until I've gone. Right. <laughs> I suppose we should yeah, check I that know. now. <laughs> <Black>. oh. <laughs> 
wow. <laughs> when you opened it up and it said black, I was, I was kind of like, that was the word I said. Reading people's minds. Can you imagine that? So was that yours as well? Yeah. Was that your wallet? What was that? That was, that was on the... Was inside here. Oh, okay, well, that's it's a difficult thing to practice. I worked on a tailor's dummy before trying it with real people. The skill itself is a physical version of what salesmen and advertisers do to us all, keeping us distracted, bewildering us with information, quietly taking our money. Hang on to that. And there's your other wallet and a sweet wrappers. I think, is that everything? you have something in your top pocket or is that everything? That's everything, isn't it? I think more or less, yeah. Okay, you've got everything. Thank you so much for your help. Oh no wait, that's yours as well. Put your wallet back again. <laughs> and then you've got your tie, you've got your watch back. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> you still need to sign this. Yeah. Thanks very much for my bag though. <laughs> that's everything. Thank you so much uh, for your help. Yeah, you want to put that back on, that's everything, isn't it? Okay. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. That's yours. I used to sketch as a child, and now when I'm not performing, I paint bizarre portraits of people. And I'm creating one here for a final experiment, certainly the most difficult thing I've attempted. We went to a preview in an art gallery. It's very exciting to be here amongst a group of some of Britain's foremost young artists. I'm gonna use this to generate a random member from the audience. Here's what I'm gonna do. I will throw this over my shoulder. Whoever catches it, you throw it again over your shoulder. Whoever catches it that time, you throw it one more time. This gets thrown three times. Somebody get ready to catch. Here we go. Throw it again. Throw it again. Somebody pick it up, throw it again. One more time into the audience. Did somebody catch it. You're our guy. What's your name? Steve. Steve, give me a beer. Hold that. Come through here with me. This painting has been covered throughout the whole party. No one knows what it is. Now, I've been obsessive about this. Not even our film crew know what this painting is. But you, Steve, are going to tell me what the painting is. You just won't know how you know. All right? Now, listen very carefully. All I'm going to tell you is that it's a painting of a celebrity, a famous person. It's, it's a caricature portrait that I painted myself. Now listen very carefully. I'm not going to tell you if that person is dead or alive, not even whether they're male or female, all right? What I want you to do now is just to get a name in your head, to think of a name now. Okay, don't say what it is, but tell me if you've got one. I've Have you got one? Yeah. Sure? Sure. Okay. Now, for the record, all right, that free choice you just made in your head was a free choice you just made then, right? You weren't asked earlier on to pre-decide on a name or write anything down or make any decisions earlier on, true? True, definitely. All right. Nobody here could know the name you're thinking of right now. You might. How would I know? You're a mind reader. Absolutely. But there's really no way I could know, is there? Seriously? No. No, okay. And genuinely there isn't. There is no way I can tell you what you're thinking of right now because it doesn't work like that, all right? But what I can do is plant an idea in your mind and then I should be able to see when you pick up on the idea that I'm giving you. Okay. All right? You won't be aware of it consciously. Put your hands by your sides and just go with this, all right? The name you're thinking of now is not it. I want you to change your mind and think of another name. You got one? Yeah. All right. Keep your eyes open as you do this, otherwise I can't do it. That's not it either. Change your mind. Think of someone else. Look at me. Think of someone else. Yeah. Say it in your mind over and over again. Say the name. Say it to me in your mind. Change your mind again. That's not it. Got one? Yeah. That's it. Whatever you've got in your head, that's the one we're going to go with. All right? Yeah. Now tell me so for the first it. time who it is you're thinking of, clearly. Orson Welles. You're thinking of Orson Welles. Are you yeah. sure? Yeah. Now you take just a step forward. Take hold of that there. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I give you <laughs> Orson Welles. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. I was thinking of Woody Allen, then suddenly I decided to confuse him, went for Orson Welles, and that's who it was. It was freaky. Unbelievable. He just read all mine. <laughs> I haven't got a pen. Or do I? I'm not sure. I don't think this guy's human, you know.
It's from another planet, I reckon. Very, very bizarre. I don't think it could be a trick, really. Uh, I, 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 I believe he uh, popped right in there and got that in his head. That's I can't fancy it. <laughs>